Hey everyone, it's Gugus here, and today I just want to talk about how I created not one, but two MMORPGs in Construct. But before we begin, let me kind of say that these aren't proper MMORPGs. If anything, I would call it like an MORPG. But the idea is there that it's an online game with role-playing mechanics that you can chat and interact with others. So, let's get started. I was very young when I started my research on creating an MMO. I think I was 13 at the time, and I was eager to create a game like Stick Online. Now, I'm sure many of you out there haven't heard of Stick Online. It was this little Game Maker game, um, I think it was made in Game Maker 7, that you were sticks and you could fight little blob guys, and you get rare hats, and that's it. There wasn't a whole lot of content, there wasn't a lot to do. But I just remember being so obsessed with this game. I, I could not stop playing it growing up. So my dream was to create, you know, as all kids, you know, how original kids are. Um, I wanted to create my own stick online. <laughs> so every year for six or seven years in a row, I attempted to make an online game. I would spend a week of just researching and reading and then if I couldn't figure it out by the end of the week, I would give up and then I would try the next year. Now, this sounds like a terrible idea, but when you're a kid and you're a 14 year old kid trying to understand networking using Game Maker, it's uh, not always the easiest thing to pick up. Uh, so I don't blame myself. After doing research, I found that Construct 2 had great multiplayer um, functionality. And I kind of messed around with it and I got really excited. It felt like this was my opportunity to finally make an online game. So I bought the software and then I did nothing for a good year or two. A couple years passed and it was, I think it was winter break during college. And I just was kind of sitting around thinking, what should I do? I have a month off. I sat down again, I pulled out Construct, and I said, all right, this time I'm gonna give myself a week and I'm gonna read the manual. I'm gonna read Construct's multiplayer manual. I'm gonna follow the tutorial. And within three days, I finally had my first working prototype. I kid you not. Now let me remind you that I was going for my bachelor's in graphic design, so I am not a programmer. I've become more of one over the past year or so, but at this point, I didn't know much. So this was a huge accomplishment for me. I literally was dancing around, I was excited, I was pumped because I was one step closer to pursuing my dream. Now you'll notice for this first MMO that we made that there's a lot of winter themes. And this is because, I don't know why, it was, I, I like to theme my games based off of the seasons that we're in. It was winter at the time, so I felt how fitting to make a game where you're, you're a penguin and then you're fighting snowmen and reindeer and you collect hats. And so over the span of this month, I started to piece together, little by little, this game. So when winter break was starting to end, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with this project. I had multiplayer, there was a chat chatting system, you had inventory, I even figured out how to connect all the stats with Firebase so you could create an account and save it. I created a rough, might I say, but a working MMO. And so we decided to release it. But we put this game out there and I didn't really expect any response from it. Um, it was just, I made this game for me and my friends and it wasn't, I wasn't trying to prove anything. I wasn't trying to make money from it. But people started to join our community and give us donations, and it was a really fun time. I learned a lot about game making, I learned a lot about programming logic, using Construct, but over the course of a year, I started to no notice limitations with the software. So it was a struggle to add really any multiplayer features, um, and it took us a long time to implement basic things. And one thing I'll have to say is that we were never able to add online enemies. The enemies you would see on your screen were just on your local machine. So people couldn't fight 
the same enemies, which really kind of took away from the experience. So after a year, we started to realize like further development of this game just isn't sustainable anymore. So Fantasy World kind of phased out and the community slowly faded away. But Fantasy World is now a distant memory and a fond one at that. So the next summer, I was out of school and I was kind of toying around with some ideas of projects I wanted to do. After Fantasy World, I kind of felt like I failed a little bit because it was such a cool project and we had so many people involved, but it just, it was impossible to, to pursue any further. The physics and the networking were such an issue that I couldn't recommend it to anyone without them getting upset immediately. And I don't know what happened or what came over me, but I did some more research on Construct and I found out about a software called Photon, which is a cloud-based server. I messed around with it in Construct and there was no issues with lag, with jumping and um, the precision of jumps. And I could do room changes, all the things that I wasn't able to do with Construct's native multiplayer, I was able to do with Photon. This blew my mind so much I recreated Fantasy World in a matter of two or three days. So Wizbirds became the spiritual successor to Fantasy World. It was better in every way, shape, and form. The, the maps were big, it had awesome views, it had different rooms, chat system, parkour, the community was bigger. So we were excited and we still have a pretty awesome, um, aggressive community on our Discord for Wizbirds supporters that are patiently waiting for updates on a regular basis. Ultimately, I'm happy that I created both these games. It was such an amazing learning experience and it, we were able to interact with so many awesome people from all over the world to play these games. And it's something I'm still passionate about and I wanna work on. My goal in the future is to actually create a proper engine from scratch. Um, I've been learning Godot and I've been learning C++. I'm trying to become the big boy programmer I know I can be. So for all you Wizbirds fans out there, Wizbirds is not dead. It's still alive, but it may take a while for it to kind of truly be what it is meant to be. So our goal is to eventually recreate or make a spiritual successor to Wizbirds from scratch. And I don't know how long it'll take me. I don't know when could be soon, it could be later, um, but it is my passion and my goal. So have hope, Wizbird's friends. It's cool to see what you can do when you actually try and you put the energy in. And I guarantee that each and every one of you, if there's a type of game you wanna create, or maybe you wanna make an online game, um, don't give up and don't let people say, oh, it's too hard, it's too overwhelming. Just do it and have fun with it. And you know, even though I made two games that, you know, the engine isn't as solid as I like them to be, that's more than most people can say. If you have any questions on how I actually coded Wizbirds, or if you just want to follow along with uh, my current project, Dewdrop Dynasty, make sure to follow me on Twitter or to leave a comment below. I appreciate so much for everyone who watched this video. Make sure to stay tuned for more devlogs and other programming or art related videos. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.